let me uh, present our host today, our speakers. Uh, today, our speakers are Roy and Orr. Uh, Roy oversees some of the iOS products at Apps Flyer with over 10 years of experience in marketing and, analy and analytics. Uh, and Orr, our senior product manager with more than five years of experience in B2B uh, product management. Uh, both of them lead our uh, SSOT solution and its latest developments. And I'm Vera, I'm a product marketing manager at AppsFlyer, and I will be moderating this session. So with no further ado, uh, I let the host take the stage. Thanks, Vera. So nice to meet you all. My name is Or, and I'm a product manager at AppsFlyer. I've been here for three years working on many analytics uh, solutions, including the single source of truth which I want to talk to you about, um, to understand its benefits, uh, the problems that it's solving um, as we try to scale iOS. Uh, many problems in the past two to three years, and we believe that single source of truth can solve a big bunch of them. So let's start with a refresher, which I'm sure that all of us are experiencing it on a day-to-day -day on some level. Uh, each one of them. So just to keep us, us all on the same page, using SCAN as a standalone introduced a lot of different uh, problems and issues with scaling iOS, with expanding to new GOs, to, uh, to, uh, to have a visibility of our uh, performance. So I'm just going to go through these uh, problems just so we know what the single source of truth is aiming to solve. So if you're experiencing any of this, uh, the following problems I'm going to go through. So um, the good news is that there is some kind of solution for them. So the first problem that uh, we all know with SCAN, it's, it's siloed. It has, it's a different and siloed and duplicated attribution source. So users are attributed by SCAN, um, can be also attributed by, by AppsFlyer, yes or not. It's, it's differentiated between the different channels and the different uh, attribution capabilities. So scan is just there on the side, on the sideline with a whole different attribution logic. And it's also partial and incomplete. So it's missing organic, upper searches, own media, a lot of different uh, page channels. Um, so on, the, on your portfolio, not everything is, can be, is trackable with uh, scan. So you see uh, an incomplete picture, a limited picture, and also limited in a way of UA only. So probably many of you only care about installs, I know, but the ones that care also about remarketing, they don't get um, even a glimpse to the ROI of the remarketing uh, budget. And to make things worse, you see numbers that are inaccurate. Inaccurate LTV, for example, only 64 values to track revenue, only day two, and only three values to track day seven, day 35 post install. Um, how can we trust such numbers to make decisions on our campaigns, to improve the, the, these campaigns based on what? What kind of trust do we have in the in-app performance that we see? And we also have this limited granularity. So, that how does different how do different countries perform uh, for a specific creative? There must be some kind of difference between how um, the users are interacting with your, your with the ads with the app based on geography, language, culture, etc. And maybe to make things even worse, there's such a big delay, right? Two three days until we get any type of feedback about uh, the changes that we make that can make our life really, really um, painful to make changes and wait to two to three days until we have any type of feedback if what we did was right or wrong. So if you're uh, emphasizing with these problems, if you feel these problems, so the good news is that single source of truth can really solve this pain point. And the way we go about that with the single source of truth is consolidating these data silos to take AppSpark and, and, and scan, take the advantages of each attribution source 
and make one plus one equal three. So instead of looking on AppSlayer as a standalone and SCAD as a standalone, we can't really use them to see the whole picture because they're duplicated. They have this, uh, the Venn diagram, the area where they just duplicated. So instead of looking on these two different attribution systems side by side separately, we're showing different numbers, which each number is partial in a way. Instead of that, we can join them together with the single source of truth. We have a flag to identify which of those, which of the users that are attributed by scan are actually duplicated and they are attributed also by AppSplier. So we apply the, the logic and we calculate the total attribution to be the, the entire AppSplier attribution plus the scan attribution that are not found by AppSplier. So the flag is not turned on. The flag is false. That's why those scan users here in this circle, the, the purple circle, they are uniquely attributed by scan. And then we can add them together to create a complete and unique picture of the unique users that we, uh, that we can attribute to a, to a media source, to a campaign. So instead of looking at them separately, the best way is to look at them as one coherent uh, picture. The single source of truth, you can look at this as the new attribution a source, the new attribution way that is collecting all the sources all together. And what it gives us, it gives us the picture of non-organic, which allows us to also have the organic traffic. So this is the only way, the only way that is possible to calculate and to take in consideration the organic traffic, the organic traffic volumes, performance, um, and Organic is crucial, and it's the only way um, for us to actually clean the non-organic with single source of truth. So, consider a new um, a new way to look on your marketing budget and your marketing performance. The, this new way is not divided by the, uh, the the realities of the different attribution authorities. It's one big picture that comes together, considering all the attribution capabilities. For example, scan, probabilistic, Apple searches, consenting users, re-engagements, own media, deep linking, and more and more and more uh, single source of truth, bringing them all together in the most synchronized way. So now that we understand, um, we have a, an, an idea of the, prob the, the problems and the, the solution, uh, I'm gonna deep dive now into uh, uh, one use case of a uh, marketing manager. And following me, Roy will take the second use case just to connect it to our day-to-day -day. um so, so just so you can like feel exactly how tomorrow um, things can look a little bit different and how you can leverage uh, this solution for your benefits so i want to take you into what i'm guessing you guys doing uh probably on a day-to-day -day, which is a daily campaign optimization it's where you opening um the dash the dashboard any dashboard that you have to track what happened yesterday, what happened in the next following the, the past few days, what happened, what happened due to a change that you made to the bid, to the creative, to the targeting, a new geo, a new media source, a new campaign. All of those things happen constantly throughout our, um, our, our work. And we want to track those, um, the, the evol evol involvement of our marketing to make sure we optimize it, right? We don't want to keep uh, a losing campaign running um, and lose money. Um, we want to make sure that we identify those uh, issues and want to make sure that we find the right, the, the good ones and we can double down on that. And so in order to do that, what we need, the ability to look into the inner performance, right? Installs and CPI is great, but it's not quite enough. And we need to get real-time data, right? Because if we made a change today, we want to be able already today to know, to have an idea if we did any, any type of mistake, we did something good. We want to be able to have a loop of break things fast and fix them fast. Um, so we want to move fast. And for that, we need real-time data. And we want to break it down by geos. Geos is a really crucial um, uh, breakdown that we are missing 
with scan and we can gain if we combine those two um, systems together. And accuracy, we want to trust the data. We want to know that we're not looking on a, some kind of a partial uh, reporting. We want to know that we're looking on the entire big picture that we can trust. So with single sorts of truths, we get for each one of them, the best solution that we can have rather than using each attribution system on its own. So in a, in a performance, the single source of truth has the most complete revenue in a events metrics. It provides the real-time data within 15 minutes, thanks to the apps for attribution capabilities of real-time attribution. And we get um, geo breakdown thanks to modeling that again, we able to, uh, to extrapolate from the app star attribution into the scan and have a high accuracy of the, this, uh, this breakdown. And the accuracy, um, probably the most important thing, um, we don't have to rely only on 64 values. Um, we can make it a lot more accurate by leveraging the app star attribution accuracy. So how does it look when you go into AppSwire's dashboard, the single source of truth dashboard in AppSwire platform. Um, basically, at the moment, you have this um, toggle where you can switch to the single source of truth um, view and you, you, you can analyze your iOS app this way. And for example, here we can see a table um, of, uh, of our campaigns. So we have here a campaign targeting uh, males between 25 to 30 years old. And what we get with single source of truth is a complete and accurate performance, thanks to the fact that we are um, aggregating together those apps uh, models attribution and the scan unique attribution. So once we adding them together, we can see a huge impact on the number of installs and how it's affecting CPI. And the way it's gonna touch later on like really significant percentage of increase in the completeness. Um, whether it's Facebook or whether it's SRNs or whether it's non-SRNs, like, um, uh, networks that, um, like TikTok and Snapchat, uh, we can see, and, and, and more and more and more and more, we can see uh, in any type of channel, we can see a huge impact on single source of truth. This is to keep in mind that it's not only, uh, it's on the media source level, it's the campaign level. In any level that you look on, you can see an increased attribution thanks to combining those two together. And of course, the real time, that's a pain. That's a huge pain, I believe, uh, that I can emphasize with. So I brought here um, this overview, like the, the, this screenshot of overview versus scan overview, for example. And I'm gonna start with scan overview. So if you look on yesterday's data, right? So you don't have, um, the data yet for Facebook, right? So the data didn't come yet for yesterday's data. Whereas if you look on the single source of truth data and let's, let's, let's dive into Facebook, for example, and we break it down by F app star attribution and scan attribution. So even though we didn't have yet the scan, yet we already have a huge significant, uh, a lot of that huge, sorry, a significant portion, it could be 10%, it could be 20% based on your ATT consent, but 20% is a, is a reliable benchmark. So 20% of the users you uh, target on Facebook already going to install the app and make tutorial um, event or registration event, some kind of event that you can track the conversion. And this 20% is a good indication. Maybe it's not 100% accurate, but it's a good indication for the changes that you've done. So if you're expecting expecting 98% uh, conversion rate to totally completed, that's a really good example. We're very optimistic here. But if you have a benchmark, so, and all of a sudden you see a 60% conversion rate only, ah, you know, maybe the targeting is not right. Or um, you can estimate your CPI based on that. So you can really make sure that your changes that you've done in the past few days are, convert, are making sense and converting users um, well, this 20% chunk for Facebook, but obviously for other media sources that support, um, that are sending clicks and stuff. So you can have even a bigger portion to, to rely on until all the scan prospects are right. So take into consideration that if you care about optimizing your campaign quickly, 
uh, to make changes and to go to sleep, to go home and have a good night's sleep, knowing that everything is fine. Single source of truth uh, solves that for you. And, and the last thing I'm going to touch on is the geo breakdown. Um, this is something we released quite recently, in maybe the past two or three months. And that provides a um, really good way to understand um, how different geos are behaving for your, for, in your portfolio, right? In your paid media. So you can compare between uh, the US, Japan, Germany. You can compare for each one of them, the ROI, the revenue, revenue per user. Um, Finally, you get you gain back the control to understand the different geographies. And also, if you care about a specific geography, you can filter it, right? You can filter just this geography and focus on where that matters for you instead of looking on the entire picture. So it allows you to either compare or to filter into what the, 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 the campaigns that you, the media sources that you, you're working on and you just changed or you make the, you, you want to track. Um, and you can also look at that across Scan, AppStar, Organic, right? You can, all of them, you can compare um, all the attribution system, all the attribution, all the types of attribution um, all together. So it gives you the control and transparency of how different, how, how different users behave based on where, how they are attributed. Um, cool. So I hope that makes sense. And I hope that you can uh, take it for tomorrow to make your daily optimization a bit better tomorrow, maybe relief a, little, a few little pain points. And now I'm gonna um, um, give it up for Roy. Cool. Uh, let me just quickly share my screen. Perfect. Cool. So thank you very much, all. Um, I'm just gonna have a few more slides. It should take about 10 more minutes. And then, by the way, if you have any questions or something like that, feel free to add them in, in the chat. Uh, we should have around 10 or 15 minutes to the end uh, to really look in, into all your questions. Uh, and I'm sure you have some. So please feel free to add those. Uh, okay, cool. So after uh, we reviewed the use case for the daily campaign optimization, uh, I now want to focus about the weekly monthly reporting use case which can provide a more broader view of your performance marketing activities. As you all know, in the ever evolving landscape of digital marketing, staying on top of campaign performance is essential for success. As marketing manager, that I'm sure you all are, your role involves continuous analysis, optimization, and strategic pivoting to ensure your campaigns are hitting the targets and delivering maximum ROI. Eventually, we are all here to increase the ROI of our businesses and the return on ad spend. And when we get past the everyday tweaks we, may, we make to campaigns, we need to start thinking big pictures. It's about switching gears from just making quick fixes to really planning ahead with a more strategic game plan. So in the next few slides, I want to highlight some use cases that SSOT help you solve, which are mainly around weekly and monthly cadence. So the first one is, of course, top line KPIs. And within the SSOT interface, you have the capability to observe and modify KPIs, including total installs, ECPI, and total revenue. These metrics offer a comprehensive snapshot of your app's performance. And if previously, or highlighted the importance of precise organic measurement. So the SSOT platform can assist in accurately measure your app's organic user traffic and display it on the dashboard where it can be compared alongside various other dimensions. And as you all know, organic is also super critical and within SCAN, there is no such thing as organic traffic. And that's another layer that we also added into SSOT. Another thing is the ability to have a complete pictures and that capability to consolidate views of all media sources within a single dashboard is important for effective campaign management, particularly when considering a comprehensive perspective. So unlike scan, which is limited to user acquisition and restricted to media sources that use scan for other tradition, and we all know that not all ad network use scan, 
So SSOT allows for the inclusion of a wide array of media sources. That includes Apple search ads, own media, and additional channels, while also factoring in re-engagement activity. This integrated approach offers an ideal solution for marketeers seeking a holistic overview of their marketing efforts. And another very crucial KPI for marketeers is the return on ad spend, ROAS. So precise revenue reporting is fundamental to effectively measure this metric, which is probably the most important metrics that we are all being measured against. So within the SSOT dashboard, you have access to day seven revenue information derived from the AppSlayer modeling solution, which I'll delve into in greater detail in the upcoming slides. Compared to the constraints of SCAN, this represents a significant advantage. Cool. So now let's review the major impact SSOT has about the most important KPIs most marketeers optimizing based on. So based on our internal analysis, we saw major lift when comparing the SSOT results to pure scan attribution results. And on average per app, we saw 29% lift in attribution to paid marketing channels, mostly a result of having the ability to identify organic attribution and attributing the right media source for the app installs. Another crucial KPI, 40% decrease in eCPI. And most importantly, we are talking about 62% increase in revenue, which is likely the most important KPI. And it's not only me saying that. You can see for yourself what Alexei from Good Game Studio, a leading gaming company, is saying. Alexei emphasized how SSOT became his go-to solution to analyze good games campaigns and figure out which media source performs best. Most importantly, good games can now allocate their marketing budget more effectively. So another important use case for SSOT is how it bridges the data gaps that all of us as iOS app marketeers are having since the last three years when April introduces ATT. One major problem in iOS today is the lack of accurate revenue reporting beyond the first one to two days. When we receive data from apps layer sources, we can fully understand the customer's lifetime value. But here's the catch. Scan data doesn't provide us with the same level of insight. It's quite limited in terms of understanding our accumulated revenue and how our campaigns are performing. So how can we bridge this gap and gain a comprehensive understanding that's where LTV modeling comes into play. LTV revenue modeling uses the customer's existing data from AppSwire to model missing scan data and provide a complete pictures of LTV performance. Basically, the way it works is that the model identifies a subset of users from the same campaign, media source, app, who display a similar behavior on both AppSwire and scan. As a next step, our LTV modeling process analyzes the AppSlayer data after seven days and calculates the ratio between day seven and day one. So in this case, you can see that the factor is five. Then it applies that same ratio to model scan data for day seven for the similar group we identified before. The day seven accumulated revenue includes both the revenue reported by AppSlayer and the model revenue from scan. So in this example, it will be $25 and not just $10. You will be able to see this information in the dashboard eight days after the install because it's eventually revenue day seven. Another problem that many iOS marketeers are facing today is the lack of country level breakdown reporting for their campaigns. Similar to LTV revenue modeling, we help to fill that gap by measuring the distribution of apps that are attributed installs to conclude the scan distribution across countries. As an example, if we know based on apps that attribution, a specific campaign had 43% of the installs from the US, then we apply the same ratio for scan data. Eventually, we combine it all together in the SSLT view, which is again, a very important daily use case like all mentioned before. 
Okay, so before we finish, I just want to make sure that we all understand where you can see those SSOP products in the AppSlide platform. So first of all, in order to be able and access the SSOP data, you need to go to the Scan Conversion Studio and actually design the SSOT as part of your schema. It only requires you to switch one toggle and it will allocate, it will take one bit out of your schema. Once you do that, you need to wait around three to five days and you should be able to see the SSO2 view within the overview dashboard. In addition to the SSO2 dashboard, there is also a way to access SSO2 data within the API. There is no dedicated API for SSO2 yet. However, you can combine between our scan raw data and API reports to the regular apps layer raw data and API reports by looking into the AF attribution flag and the duplicated data similar to the way we do it internally. Cool. So now let's just recap about everything we went through during today's session about SSOT. In a nutshell, those are the main benefits that SSOT can provide you. By combining both scan and apps attribution, it helps you to attribute more installs Getting to know an accurate view of attribution and install help you to get a better understanding of your true ECPI, ECPA, and ROAS. SSOT also includes an accurate view of your organic traffic. And unlike SCAN, SSOT supports real-time reporting. And last but not least, by supporting modeling layer, SSOT also provides you day seven KPIs and countries breakdown for your campaign analysis. Cool. Uh, thank you very much. Um, I now hope that you have some questions and we, we should have around 10 to 15 minutes for Q&A. Thank you, uh, or Roy. We have some questions, some really good questions that I believe will take some time to answer. So let's, uh, let's start. I will read them uh, and let me know who wants to, to take. The first one, how does AppsFlyer use the modeling? or what does it base the modeling on to extrapolate that 20% ATT consents into the total uh, showed in the dashboards? I believe both of you can also see the questions. Uh, yeah. In a, so oh. uh, feel I'll free. be happy to take that question to start with. Uh, first of all, thanks for the questions. Really interesting, I can see them indeed. Um, yeah, so we so a single source of truth enters a new era of modeling, um, basing, base, basing your decisions on probabilistic information rather than deterministic, which is, is belong to the past, right? So um, in this question, you mentioned a uh, modeling, but not really modeling what, because we're doing modeling of LTV, modeling for uh, geo, modeling for null conversion values as well. But if I understand correctly, the, 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 you meant to the LTV modeling and how the LTV modeling is based on the ATT consent is as follows. So basically, as you as you mentioned, yeah, it depends on the 20% ATT consent for Facebook and for Google, for the SRNs, for non-SRN. So there's a lot of more uh, of users attributed by AppSlayer. So it gets into the 80% mark. But for Facebook, for, let's take for Facebook, for example, and say you have 20% um, ATT consent. So in, indeed it takes, it extrapolates those, the performance of those 20% and reflecting it into the scan installs. So what basically happens is that um, there is like a technical, as the Roy mentioned, and I, I hope it's, uh, I can make it maybe that it's share a little bit of more light into it. Basically we look on the model, the, the, the machine learning model, uh, take a look on how those users that are attributed by scan, how they are performing in the first few days, comparing it with the performance of the users attributed by AppSlyer, the ATT consent users, this 20%, how are they behaving with the first two, two days, breaking them, to, breaking them down to uh, different cohorts based on their performance, and then takes the, uh, the, set, the following seven days and check how are these cohorts per performing the, follow, the seven days post install. And based on this actual performance of those users, we can extrapolate and we can reflect it back to those scan that we don't have the data for. And that's how we fill up the, 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 the LTV, the, the revenue day seven, soon to come in-app events day seven um, of those scan 
attributed users that we do not have this data available for. I hope I managed to answer this question. Cool, so let's take uh, another one. What is the benefit that day seven revenue provides an SSOT on top of scan four, which already has the ability to measure day seven revenue? Yeah, sure, so I can take it. Uh, first of all, very, very good question because um, in theory, scan four also provides day seven revenue, right? So you may ask yourself, why do we need to model that's missing piece. Uh, and there are a lot of uh, basic cons to the way scan four is uh, actually providing revenue day seven today. One of them, um, it takes, there is a major delay in scan four, right? While we provide you in SSOT day seven on after eight days, within scan four, it may take up to 13 days until you'll be able to see revenue day seven. So that's one thing. Another thing is that in scan four, within the second and third post back with course value, you only have three different values to measure revenue. Okay, so it means that let's say you have an app that is operating in both in many different countries, many different revenue ranges. It will be very, very hard to really capture an accurate revenue with only three ranges because eventually we don't know the exact revenue that the user generated. We only know that it falls within a specific bucket. And by relying only on scan for, for revenue reporting, it makes it very, very hard um, to actually do that. And another last benefit I can think of is the fact that if you rely on the LTV modeling revenue within SSOT, it means that you can use the scan for buckets for in-app measurement. And that way you should be able to measure both revenue with SSOT and in-app events using scan four. Cool, thank you, Roy. So the next question is quite long, so I'll try to maybe like uh, to read it uh, so everyone can uh, can can hear it uh, best. Can we pull or see the AF attribution flag you mentioned on an aggregated report and not only while pulling raw data? As you probably know, many biggest RNs such as TikTok and Meta do not always send the full data back to AppsFlyer, sending it anonymously or in aggregate. So would it also be available through aggregated reports in the future, or perhaps it won't be possible as you need to display it in the user level granularity in like in the raw data? I will take that. Thank you, Vera. Um, so that's correct. Today it's only available through raw data. And it, we are planning to, uh, to serve it also in aggregated, aggregated report. So uh, at the moment, um, the single source of truth, um, we, we give it in our raw data, but it means that you can do it on yourself. So you can aggregate yourself the, single, the scan data where after attribution equals after flag equals uh, false. Anyway, any, and all the calculations we mentioned, it's things that you can do, even if you take the TikTok and the Facebook um, aggregated data, it's possible for you guys to do it on yourself. However, we understand that it's a big, uh, it's, it's, it's not easy. It's a big effort and not all of us have the, the resources to make it and the complex, the, the ability to face these uh, the complexities. Therefore, we do have on the roadmap to, um, to serve this data already aggregated, pretty much similar as it's displayed on the dashboard in an aggregated uh, data report, which also going to include the, the all the modeling, all the LTV modeling, the geo modeling, which is at the moment is not available through raw data. So definitely possible, uh, definitely on the roadmap. I don't have an ETA yet, unfortunately. Um, but um, yeah, potentially 2020 during 2024. Cool. Um... We have another question, uh, a 2024 question. In the future, do you always do you also plan to have an Android SSOT version based on a combination of AppSlyer attribution together with Privacy Sandbox? Yeah, I can, I can take it. Um, so for sure, uh, we are currently, as you probably know, working on our uh, support for Privacy Sandbox for Android. And for sure, eventually, the idea is to have also single source of truth for Android, the same as we do it for iOS. Uh, we need to see how it will plays out, when exactly Android will deprecate 
uh, the Google advertising ID, but eventually our vision is to have everything in one place for iOS, for Android, multi-app support, everything together in one place, for sure. Amazing. So I think we have uh, time for one last question. Um, in other words, regarding AppsFire modeling, as explained in LTV section now, the in-app events reporting modeling is also a simple extrapolation of ATT consent opt-in percent percentages. Yeah, correct. I'll take that. Yes, exactly. Um, as a, as an explained for revenue, it's also applied for in-app events. Um, I'm, I mean, when we're talking about LTV, it could be like the first day or two on the, the day seven and in the future also day 35 for sure. Um, so yeah, we are doing a simple extrapolation. Well, a machine learning model does this extrapolation. And so we are waiting for seven days until we are collecting the data based on the users attributed by AppSplier. It could be by ATT consent. It could be by any other type of attribution uh, method. And we apply that over to the scan uh, installs where we do not have their, their data. So it's an ex it's extrapolation. It's the exactly the right um, technical terminology to use for this machine, modeling, machine learning model. Great. 